Here's 45 plus changes in iOS 18 that you may have missed. iOS 18 developer beta one has been out for a few days now and having iOS 18 now for a few days, I've discovered a lot more features that I wanna talk about in today's video. Hey everyone, it's Andrew and welcome back to the channel. Let's get right into it. Starting with widgets. Within health, there's two new widgets for tracking your vitals as well as your cycle. And there's also a new journal widget for inspiration. So the widget will ask you a question, you can add an entry based off that question, and you can refresh it to get another prompt. Within journal, you can also now include your Apple Health to it and track your well being. And there's a new insights page for better tracking of your current streak, how many entries you've done this year, and how many words you've written and the last entry date that you did. By now we all know there's a lot more customization within iOS, but one thing Apple did not mention is if I tap on large when customizing my icons, it takes away the app icon name. It makes it bigger and I think in some ways makes it a little bit cleaner. Control Center got massively changed, but one small thing, one small little detail that I do wanna call out is the power button can now be tapped here. Rather than having to click the buttons, you just tap the power and it'll allow you to shut off your iPhone right from Control Center. There's also a ton of new settings. So if I actually go into settings, the entire UI looks a little bit different. Initially, it looks pretty much the same as iOS 17, but if I go down, you actually see that apps are missing and you have to tap on apps to individually update the app that you want to in your settings. I mentioned this in my previous video, but it's worth mentioning again. You can actually change the charge limit in battery. So it used to be only 100% or 80%, but now it goes in intervals of five all the way up to 100%. There's also a ton of new accessibility settings. So if I go here to accessibility and I select motion, right here, you can actually activate show vehicle motion cues. So when you're in a vehicle, these black dots will appear on your phone and it will adjust to the direction of the car to reduce motion sickness. And if we go back, there's also a new feature called eye tracking where you can control your iPhone with your eyes and initially playing around with it, it's not super good. So there's definitely improvement on Apple's part to make this better. Staying in settings, if I go to my iCloud, go here, you can see that the UI has changed quite a bit as well. So you can see everything here. You can back up your iCloud. You can see they have this new subscriber edition, which doesn't really look Apple-like to me. And you can see everything on your device. General also looks different as well. Right here, you can see your AirDrop settings, there's CarPlay settings, and then like software, iPhone storage looks a bit different here. So just another UI change to settings. In settings, privacy and security have been updated as well. And it has a nice UI and looks a little bit cleaner in my opinion. And if you tap on something, you can actually see like for calendars, what I've given access to. You'll also be able to record live video with emergency SOS. So I can't demo that right now. That's pretty cool. You can send video and record during an emergency situation. There's another setting in accessibility called music haptics. So if I tap on this here, I can turn it on for Apple Music and Apple Music Classical. And what this will do is it'll play haptic feedback as I play my song. So I'll actually turn off the audio. And if I open up Apple Music and just play this song here, for example, it'll show up as music haptics. And you can actually turn this setting off right here if you want to, but I'll go ahead and turn the volume down so I don't get demonetized. But it's given me haptic feedback as I am listening to this song, which is really cool, more for someone that's hearing impaired, but also really nice. Now, going out of settings, if I tap on the maps here, where it has like your library of locations, for example, like home or work, or I have like the place I play soccer at and a doctor's office, it actually shows up a little bit different. I actually like the way these icons look. They look a little bit cleaner and sharper. And going out of maps, there's a lot of changes to notes. And one of the features that's really cool in iOS 18 is you can actually individually make an app 
only be opened by using Face ID like I do for Apple Notes. Let's say I wanna make an app hidden. I can long press on Instagram, tap on require face ID here, and then it's gonna ask the question, require face ID or hide, and I'm gonna hide it. So now that app is going to be in my hidden folder and only I can open it up. And if you try to search for Instagram in my phone, you won't be able to find it, which is really nice. Now, Apple Notes gets some nice, really small changes, but I think they're really good. So you can actually change the color of the text in Apple Notes. So if I tap here, you can change the color to orange or purple, pink, mint, or blue. And if I select something here, like I have it as a header and I kind of create it as a list, I can come here and tap on this drop down arrow and it hides the text that I've already written to kind of make it a little bit easier because I know previously it was kind of annoying to scroll down so you can kind of condense your notes a little bit better. Another really cool feature in Apple Notes is being able to use math notes. So if I go to the little pencil and just write something like three times three equals, it'll allow me to solve that automatically and it gives me the number. And if I actually go out of here and into calculator, the calculator app has been totally redesigned. It looks pretty similar to what it was already, but if I tap here, I can actually change it from basic to a scientific calculator to math notes. And I can even do currency conversion, which I think is really nice, especially if you're in another country or planning a nice trip abroad. Also in notes, if I hit the three dot button here, you can see recent notes that are suggested to you so you can look at those quicker. You can also see here there's math results as well. You can record voice memos within notes now. So I'll tap on here and I'll have the option of record audio and I can start recording my audio right here. There's also transcription if I was doing that. And if I tap done, I can see the audio message here. Back in settings under weather, there's a new setting for location. So when it shows your location, it'll show home or work. If I go to weather and it shows my location of home, pretty cool. If I play a movie from the TV app, I can come here to audio and select enhance dialogue, which is really cool. I thought it would only be on Apple TV like the device, but it's within the app, so you have it on iPhone as well. You can either tap enhance or boost, and it'll make the dialogue sound better. In reminders, you can see that there's a recently deleted folder, so you can get those back easier. If I go in here and type something like banana, and it gives me this weird like breads and cereal, that's wrong. I can come here and actually change it now to fruit. And there's a new setting for reminders with additional language. So you can select an additional language to categorize your grocery items. The Photos app gets an entire redesign, which I think a lot of people are gonna be surprised by. It's actually a little bit difficult to navigate through. There's new places like filters. I can filter out different photos as well as sort it by date captured or recently added. And I can change the view to zoom in, out, do a ratio grid, screenshots can be removed, and my shared library glyph can be removed as well. If I tap on where I am, my little icon, it gives me a summary of how many photos and videos I have, and some settings within here that I actually don't have to go to the settings app, I can do it right from photos. There's also a new way that you can configure your photos to look. So right now I have it on favorites, recently saved, map, videos but i can add a different suggestion like screenshots and then if i go back and if i go here i can see my screenshots there's also some changes to albums so right now you can create an album in ios 17 no problem but you can create a folder now where it has multiple albums within the folder and I think that's a really nice new change. The UI just looks entirely different as well. You have media types and utilities. There's also this new wallpaper suggestion section. So if I tap on this one, it'll actually create the wallpaper for me and take me right to the lock screen. 
There's also a new trip section within photos. So you can actually see all the trips that you've been on that's already been configured. I always found this kind of difficult to create albums and have them as trips or vacations that I've been on. So now it's in all one place. All right guys, so that's all the changes that I have for today. If you like this kind of video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. As always guys, thanks for watching, God bless, and I will see you on the next one.